welcome the spokesman for the King of Glory today, Pastor Kenneth, Kenneth Sharpton Glasgow. That's why I don't like them bios, y'all, because they just tell a story that that, that is like, oh, nah. <laughs> but without any further ado, I want to introduce my mother, and that's Mama Tina. <laughs> Always told her I'd give her a house. She never knew it was going to be a mission house to feed folks. Amen. <laughs> Sister Joy with us right there. Y'all give her a hand. The backbone that keep everything going on. You ever had somebody just stay with you no matter what? Got plenty of reason to go somewhere, but they still there. Amen. My daughter Kayla is with her right there, new upcoming actress. We're going to push in her place. The new upcoming lead over tops and uh, person that uh, bail bondsman and taking over everything that we're doing here and help me register all them people you heard about. My daughter Kenyatta, my oldest daughter. And my son-in-law, my son-in-law just getting out of prison. Y'all going to hear a lot from him. He went in prison after being with us about two or three years doing this work. He got in prison and did it so good inside, they just gave him parole and said, no, you got to get out. <laughs> Amen. That's Brother Tess. But I love to go right into it. I mean, I just feel so good. Y'all see me just running around and speaking to people and saying, hey, and I just love the spirit that is in this house. And let's give a hand. Yeah, yeah. Let's give a hand to this man and this first lady that y'all got. Man. That y'all got. Y'all really don't know how nationally he's opening the doors for a lot of people like me who they wouldn't even open doors for. Y'all heard all that work in my bio? It's hard to believe people wouldn't even let me come to their little organizations and talk and their churches and preach and all that to Michael McBride said, wait a minute, kick the door and wait a minute, hold it. Why you ain't listening to them? And so what we have to realize is in this ministry, in the kingdom building work and in the stuff that we're into called God, we have to open up doors for other people. You know, it's strange to me. It's strange to me. How people want to get out here and act like it's a solo. And it's the kingdom. Amen? Catch yourself when you find yourself in that soloistic way. To where you want to do something all on your own. And you want to be like Daffy Duck and say, mine, mine, all mine. It's not yours, yours. It ain't yours. And without any further ado, we're going to get to the word. Because I do have a few things that I want to say to you. And I'm going I'm to just go somewhere else for a minute and then come back where I'm going. So we're going to start off in 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. I don't know what's going on with you, but what I do know what God is saying is that when I say this scripture, when I get to it in that A verse, you're going to know exactly what God is saying to you. Because there's no need of holding back and waiting on nobody. So sometimes you got to leave folks and then come back and get them later. Amen? Sometimes you got to leave folks and come back and get them later. Sometime. Amen. Amen. And it came to pass when David and his men would come to Ziklag on the third day that they, the Amalekites had invaded the south in Ziklag and smitten Ziklag. And burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city. And behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept and cried until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive, Ahinoam and the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself. You ever had to encourage yourself? 
David encouraged himself in the Lord. And David said to Abithar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abithar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Amen. Pursue, for thou shalt oh, surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Let's go to first. Chronicles, 2nd Chronicles, I'm sorry, in the 17th verse. Sometimes we get into this fight and we start doing things and we recall, recall a lot of things that happened before. And as we look into the movement that's going on now, there's two movements that's actually going on. They've been going on, but they've been like under the radar, so to speak. And there's a big hate movement that's coming on now. And everybody's looking at Trump, they're looking at the election, they're looking at what's happening in Baton Rouge, they're looking at all the police killing our sons and daughters. But like you heard the preacher say, the most significant killing is citizen to citizen. And when they start talking about black on black crime and all that, I always ask them, well, what about white on white crime? You know, why everything got to be blacked out? Y'all want to whitewash us, but now y'all want to black us out. Which one is it? And what ends up happening is now you have black folks that got to a point that say, hey, it ain't bad as it was back then. It ain't bad as it used to be. So we all right. We good. But somebody turned around and said, wait a minute now. We ain't good. So we have to thank God for people like Trump and all those white supremacist groups that's coming out. But not only because it revealed the racism and everything that we've been telling folks that already existed. But it made some of us black folks realize that, hey, we ain't good. And in the fruition of all that, and with all that manifesting itself and coming into the play right now, it's time for us to look at what is not happening. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. So the hate is rising, and you got the hate movement going on, and it's starting to develop, and to see all the people who you thought were your friends starting to ease away from you in different ways, and you're starting to see the white privilege from a different way, and white folks getting out there with groups called Surge and showing up in racial problems and saying, hey, we don't even like the way you're treating them. We're not racist, and we're not going to let you be racist, and we're not going to let you categorize us like that. We ain't even going to take advantage of our privilege, we're going to show up and we're going to show out with them black folks. And in the midst of that, somebody was sitting there and saying, all this evil coming in the world, but God, but God. In 1 Samuel, it says in Jehoshaphat, I mean, first, 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 17, it says in Jehoshaphat, his son reigned in his steed. Now think about what we just read about David. And strengthened himself against Israel. Now what happened is Jerusalem, come on y'all, Israel and Judah, Jerusalem and Judah, they split. They split because some of them got so engulfed into the world, so wrapped up into what the world was doing. It got so much to where you couldn't tell the church from the world because the world got churchy and the church got worldly and you just couldn't tell the difference and you couldn't tell who was different. You know how back in the old days, some of y'all young folks might not remember, but some of us older folks that look at, you used to have these grandmothers and stuff that you just didn't want to go around because they could read everything you done did. You know, I used to didn't even want to be around Mama Flossie. She started calling me Tempe, my great-grandmother. So I always tempted her to beat my, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I didn't want to go around her. Because no matter what kind of camouflage I tried to paint, she, she could see through it. 
And so what happened here is Jehoshaphat was, was trying to get with God. And he, he placed in the second verse, and he placed forces in all of the fifth cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim when Asa and his father had taken. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat. Why? Because he walked in the first ways of his father David and sought not unto Balaam. Did anybody hear me? But sought to the Lord God of his father and walked with his comrades, walked in his commandments and, and, and walked with all of the things that God told him to do and not after the doings of Israel. Is there anybody in here that's walking in the first ways of God? I'm talking about when you first got with God and how you couldn't cuss. Some of us don't remember them days. Pastor had to pray for me yesterday. I wanted to cut somebody out. Two or three of them slipped before he could catch me. He was running. <laughs> hey, Amen. You remember them first days when you wanted everybody to get saved? Come on, come on, come on now. We're talking about them first ways. You remember them first ways when it wasn't nothing for you to go out in the street and tell people about God? Oh, come on, come on. He walked in the first ways of his father. We just read the story about David, how he lost the zigzag. Now, let me tell you what happened. Let me break it down and give you this narrative. So what happened is David was one of the strongest kings that ever existed, mighty man of God. He killed the lion, the tiger, and the bear. Oh, my. And he invaded and won everywhere he went and every big city he took over. But Ziklag was a small, small place, i.e. in another small place that he went. They overtook him in Ziklag, small army. And he couldn't understand what happened. How did I lose my strength? How did this little bitty army, we done took 3,000 and overcame 50,000. And now here a band of 2,000 that overtook and took my wives and took all the wives. And see, if we would have read further in the story, the people that was with him, they wanted to stone him because he lost his first way. But Jehoshaphat, that's why I'm looking at my children so hard. I'm going to try to make it without crying through here. And I'm looking at my children so hard because sometimes we as men of God, oh, y'all got to hear me now. So some usher happening is finna go on right now. Anybody remember what usher do? It's just about some confessions. So sometimes us men of God, we fall away, y'all don't hear me, from our first way. And in the transitioning and in the transposition of us falling away from our first way, we start to look out and seek who's going to be the one that get back to our first way. Because, see, God is also loving. God is also merciful. But God is also just. And within that justice, he said, I'm going to make you finish what I told you to do. Moses was able to see the promised land, but he couldn't go in it. Because he had lost his first ways. One of the things that we got to do, I'm going to be real short today. Y'all lucky I got a plane. <laughs> and it's verse 4, it says, But sought to the Lord, <laughs> the Lord God of his Father, and walked in his commandments, and not after the doings of Israel. Somebody say the doings of the world. Amen. We can't drop it like it's hot no more. We got to drop it like it's God. Amen. We got to reinvent everything they done tried to build us up in this culture. We got to get back to our first way when we first got with God. Amen. We wouldn't even do certain things. Folks smoke around us. We stop from smoking. My daughter got on me the other day. Now I'll buy somebody some alcohol and cigarettes. Y'all don't got soldier usher up in here. <laughs> Didn't even allow folks to smoke around me. You better not cuss around me. Now I'll cuss you out. <laughs> Amen? Walked away from your first way, your first ways. 
So getting to my point here, Jehoshaphat came back and he came in his strength so hard that after he seek God in number five, it says, therefore, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand. Do anybody hear me? The misnomer that we got, we let the world creep into the church. We let the world creep into all of, of Pastor McBride's teaching. And we think that we got to go get the kingdom and bring the kingdom in our hand. And we got to make ourselves established in the world. But it says right here that he followed God so much that God established the kingdom. Not establish him in the kingdom. Not establish him in the world. But establish the kingdom in his hand. Because he went back to what? His father's. Oh, y'all got to hear me this morning. And after he established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat. I was asking God, why I can't get no money? He said, well, maybe because you stayed on the chair and cussed them folks out, and they supposed to be in the front. I said, well, you know, besides that, why they won't <laughs> give me no money? And he said, well, maybe you need to find out what you're doing wrong. Maybe you need to change your narrative. And I said, Lord, why? They won't give me the." He said, well, let me just go and tell you. You done lost your first ways. So you could be a national preacher. You could have all these accolades you heard. You could sit up there and be on TV, radio, and everything else. But if you ain't right with God. Stuff would just look good. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But when you get home, your wife knows the real story. You ain't nothing. Ain't never going to be nothing. <laughs> I'm disappointed in you. I remember how you used to be. I came here because I thought you had changed. But if the people only knew who you really was, Get back to your first way. It says, and what happened is Jehoshaphat got all these presents, and he had the riches and honor in abundance. And his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord moreover. And he took away the high places and the groves out of Judah. Come on now. He, he dismantled, and he knocked down all of the idolistic ways that even his own family had. He did not participate. He did not say, oh, that's all right. That's just you. He went and knocked that mess down. No, you can't do that in front of me. No, you can't do that in front of my children. No, you not going to sell dope on the corner of my church. No, you not going to sell dope in front of my house. Find you another corner because I'm not going to die because I done went back to God's first ways. We just letting stuff go on to get along. Where about somebody gun? Because they got an AK. That don't shoot but 30 rounds. We got a Bible, got 66 books. Time for us to get back to our first ways. It says also in the third year of his reign, Pastor Mike McBride, it says he sent to his princes, even to Benahel. He didn't try to do it alone, y'all. And Obadiah, and Zechariah, and Nathaniel, and Mechaliah, and to teach in the cities of Judah. And with them he sent Levites, even Shemaniah, and Nathaniah, and Zabadiah, and Asael, ooh, these names, and Sheremarathith. And Jonathan and the Bible and all of them, and he sent them. <laughs> Woo! Hey, man! Lord, help me with my speech this morning. I'm already tongue tied, y'all. That did not help me at all. <laughs> Woo! Number nine saying they taught in Judah and they had the book of the law with them of the Lord. They were teaching them the law. And I'm finding something in all of our advocacy work. You know what I'm finding out? It's already written. We ain't got to rewrite nothing. We ain't got to go look for nothing else. We ain't got to do nothing but present to them what they don't already know and get back to our first ways. And look what it says right here. It says in all, in number 10, it says, And the fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms. If we get back to our first, word, first ways in the church, Everybody going to start fearing us. 
Because the abundance to come. Right now, you hear Michael McBride's name, everybody's like, oh, they're going to they they pass the mic. They're going to pass the mic. And I'm like, what's wrong with passing the mic? You know, he, he, he ain't with all that cussing. You know, you know. I said, okay, we don't cuss around. Yeah, but you, you don't understand, Jacko. <laughs> you know, he ain't a preacher like you. What you mean he ain't a preacher like you? know, he, he, mm -mm, mm -mm. you got to be right around passing the mic. I said, oh, you got to be right around. So he following God, ain't he? Yeah, you know, he. He's strictly by God. Okay, well, what am I strictly by? See, some of y'all miss that. <laughs> How come you so comfortable around me, but ain't come? Hello, somebody. Ooh, usher in the house. I'm going to sing in a minute. And the fear of the Lord fell upon those kingdoms and, the, and all the lands that were proud about Judah so that they made no war against him. And also, look at this, y'all. Also, some of the Philistines that were supposed to be fighting them, they brought Jehoshaphat some presents and tribute and silver in the Arabians. Do y'all hear me? We in verse 11. In the Arabians brought him flocks and 7,700 rams and 7,700 goats and Jehoshaphat waxed great. What I'm trying to tell y'all today is that we get back to our first ways. Somebody going to not only give us presents, but our haters are going to start loving us. My mother put something on Facebook a couple of weeks ago. She said, I'm looking for me some new haters. I'm taking application for some new haters because my old ones done started to like me. I need some new haters. When you in the first ways of the Lord. So coming back to our advocacy work, coming back to the work we do with the formerly incarcerated, coming back to the work we do with the police brutality, coming back with the work you're doing with the young folks and stopping all this madness going on, killing our children and killing each other, coming back to going against gun violence and stopping all the violence. We have to look at if we get back to our first ways. In 1965, what happened? They didn't do it by going in the streets and do just marching. They didn't do it by just doing and polls and petitions. They did it in the church. They went back to God and they seek God just like David did after he had messed up and said, Lord, shall I pursue them? And God said, no, not only pursue them, but you shall recover all. If we as the church will get back to our first way, not only do we pursue them, but we shall recover all. Even our haters will start bringing us present. Don't you know the words? say the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just go tell them folks give me my money back we got to get back to our first ways when they did all this it wasn't but 600 of them on the bridge you know I know you know Joseph Laurie he sat there and told us he said with Glasgow you know it was 600 of us on the bridge when I was down in 65 he said but I know now it was 50,742. I said, well, how you know now 50,742 when one but 600 y'all out there? He said, because the rest of them folks told me they were there. And I said, well, Joseph Law, them folks couldn't have been there. He said, well, some of them weren't born yet, but they claimed they were there. <laughs> some of them didn't even know what was going on, but they claimed they were there. How many folks you got in your life ain't had nothing to do with your progress? Come on, come on, come on now. Ain't had nothing to do with your accomplishments. Even family members especially don't even like you. But time God bless you, they claim they were down. <laughs> and you know what he said? I said, well, what we do? We got to expose them folks. He said, no, we don't expose them. I said, what we do, use them? He said, no, we don't use them. I said, well, what we do, Joseph Law? He said, we invite them to come on in. <laughs> he said, God has a thing called love. And God has a thing on one side called grace and another thing called mercy. He said, and when we start expressing that love in this time of hate, grace and mercy are going to stand up. Folks going to stop killing each other just because we around. 
When I was in prison, I want to tell you this story. They started sending me all these places. My mama lost. You see all that pretty hair she got? She lost all her hair and everything. And we said, why y'all keep shipping my baby all around? I can't even talk. Do you know that's to prevent you from talking to your folks and all that? Because you're always in transit, they call it. And I couldn't understand what they was doing until May 23rd, 2001. I went right back before Judge Bob Waddles to get my life without where I never get out. They had put weed, marijuana in the back of my Bible. It's legal here, but it wasn't legal back there. And they put it in the Bible, and they locked me up, gave me an outside charge. I looked at all them letters them doggone police had wrote, and I just knew my life was over. He said, go and sin no more. I fell on the ground. I knew my life was over. I looked at this uh, a public defender I had, tall white dude with a bald head. He looked like a skinhead for real. And I looked up at him. He was crying, and I said, it's all right. You did what you could do. He said, you don't understand what just happened, do you? I said, yeah. He threw the book at me, my life over. He said, no, you going home. I had got back in God's first ways. When, when I got back with his first ways, those letters that they had sent that I thought were hate letters were letters of them right to the judge and said, everywhere we put him, he changed the environment. He started preaching. It stops the violence and everything else. I'm trying to tell you now, if we get back to our first way, everywhere we go, everybody we talk to, everybody that hated us, everybody that did us wrong gonna start blessing us and they ain't even gonna know why. I'm asking y'all now, they got a hate movement. We got a love movement. How do you kill a hater? You gotta love them to death. We gotta get back to our first ways. No matter how much they hate, that was just how much we love. I thank God now for the white folks that's going with us because they got love. See, it ain't about color. It's about your spirit, says the Lord. And those that are with me will be with me in spirit. They won't be with me because they white. They won't be with me because they black. They won't be with me because they got degrees. They will be with me because they got love of my spirit. Get back to your first ways. They got the civil rights movement. They did it in the church. They got the Voting Rights Act, Civil Rights Act. They went through the church. We in the time now, folks ain't coming. So guess what? The Bible said pursue them. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I know all this talk they got out there, Pastor McBride. I thank God he ain't listened to it about separation of church and state. Y'all know why they did that? So they could bring in the FBI in the church. I ain't talking about the Federal Bureau of Investigations. I'm talking about the faith-based initiative money. The money that made us start competing against each other instead of completing each other. Because we got to look at somebody right now, touch your neighbor. I don't care who it is, touch them right now and say, look here, I can't do this without you. The oxygen I breathe in is the carbon monoxide you breathe out. I'll pray for you. You pray for me. But let's all us get back to our first way. Once we get back to our first way, we can go step out there and stuff and just start changing. Folks will start looking at you funny. What happened to you? Oh, you think you brand new? I am, and I can make you brand new too. I done got back to my first way. Brother, I'm going to tell you something right now. I don't care nothing about family that's lost. I want to tell you about family that's coming in. All the children and everything, I'm just speaking subliminal. So only you understand what God said to you. You know what he's talking about. All the children going to be together as one. Just watch now. All that friction going on. Watch how God sell it. Sometimes, you know what God my Buddha say? Nothingness is the best something to do sometimes. Just pray.
That's it. That's it. That's all you got to do. Step back. Step back for a minute. I've been looking at you, bro, for the longest. I don't know what kind of business you in, but that business you and your wife talking about and all that, y'all need to go ahead and get that started. God said pursue them, and you're going to overcome, and you're going to recover all because God really moving. My sister, I want to snatch away the hurt. I want to take away the pain. I want to take away the stress. I want to take away the fights. I want to take away all that mess on your jaw. I want to take all, we're going to take all that now. Somebody open that door for a minute and we're just going to throw all that out the door. Somebody help me throw it out. We're just going to throw it out that door. You've been faithful. See, the thing about you, you've been faithful. You ain't even told nobody. You just sit there and act like everything all right. But God said he know. He seen you crying that night when you put all the kids to bed and you got everybody to sleep and don't nobody know it. But he said you've been faithful. And cause of your faithfulness, see, y'all got to realize something. We ain't got to have skills. We ain't got to do nothing but be faithful. Y'all know that we got to start stop letting the world interpret our language. We peculiar people. We God's people. We don't speak their language. Language. We don't speak they lingo. What we speak is God's spiritual language. And that God's spiritual language. I ain't got to know nothing. I ain't got to have no education. Only thing I got to do is be willing. And if I'm willing, God go use me anyhow. Anyhow. When they reject me, he going to use me. When they go against me, he going to use me. Oh, when they count me out, even my family, he going to use me. Because, see, God don't see what I am. He see what he made me to be. <laughs> when we get back to our first ways, in Jesus' mighty and gracious name, I just want to thank you, Pastor Mike. And as a spirit that took over, Everybody grab somebody and pray for them. Everything you need for yourself. My sister, I've watched you the whole time I've been here. The whole time I've been here. And I'm going to tell you something. The only thing I'm going to say to you is over. Oh, All that mess about that dial syndrome and something wrong. I don't hear nothing that tell me I'm wrong for even having that. Only thing I want to hear from you is how blessed you are to be used by God. Because anytime God gives life, it's all right. And anybody that wants to speak death ain't for God. So all them tears and all that is over now. You going to tell it. Gonna tell everybody right and say it's over now. When folks go to fuss and they want to talk mess, and he tell you don't listen to your family no more. You know what you tell them when they call? It's over now. Can't beat me up no more. Can't talk about me no more. Cause it's over now. And thank you for staying there, bro. Thank you. We don't lift up our men enough in sensitivity when they stay. Oh, everybody holding somebody else's hand. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I know you ain't used to prophecy and all this and that and the other. Say, please, don't tell my bit, but I ain't going to shut up. I'm going to lift you up. The only thing I'm going to say is thank you. We'll talk about it later. Thank you. Amen. Touching somebody else's hand. Come on, Pastor. Touching somebody else's hand. We just going to lift each other up. We put each other down so much. Criticize each other. Come on, lift your hand. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. Lift your neighbor's hand. And we just going to lift each other up. And we going to look at that person next to us on our right and on our left. And we going to say to them, I'm going to be with you no matter what. And now that I've seen your face, and it's implanted in my mind. I'm going to be praying for you. Because my blessings is in you. My strength is in you. The only thing that's holding me together is me praying for you. And I know as I pray for you, God's